fully 52 seconds of a lead. It's a handy advantage over Damiano Caruso, Stefan Kreuzvik 105 back, Domenico Pozzavivo slipping from the lead back to fourth after yesterday's uh, tough climb to the Tiefenbach Glacier. Well, that's the situation overall. Spilak in yellow, Peter Sagan still in control of the Black Points jersey, and uh, Lassie Norman Hansen, he's trying to win that blue jersey, and that's going to uh, up offer much of the entertainment today. Matthias Frank is the uh, leader of the best Swiss rider competition and AG to Walla Mondial have a handy advantage in the best team classification. Here are the scenes yesterday above Solden on the uh, immense towering figure that is the Tiefenbach Glacier. 14 kilometers plus all the kilometers it took to get to the hill in the first place of climbing. And Spielak, well, put his team on the front in the early stages of the hill then went out alone for most of the Tiefenbach Glacier. It was an immense performance from the Slovenian rider, 30-year-old, former winner of uh, Tour de Suisse two years ago. Who would bet against it after yesterday's performance? So Spilak uh, in yellow and very much in control as we head into this penultimate stage, the final road stage. As I said, it is a circuit based on the uh, town of Schaffhausen. Racing in and around the Herblingen. On the edge of Schaffhausen, and it has uh, got three intermediate sprints along the way. The intermediate sprints just before the start of the uh, Cat 3 climb. Cat 3 climb counts on each and every one of those eight laps. And that's uh, going to be an interesting moment for the uh, riders contesting the King of the Mountains classification. There's the profile, it repeated on eight occasions. The uh, short, sharp shock of a climb, not really of any significance first time round, but uh, well, with every repeated lap of that uh, short little drag, I tell you what, legs are already tired after the efforts they've made over the two last two mountain days. The riders are really suffering, struggling to get the legs back into action as we Enjoy some of the uh, sights of Schaffhausen, which is a really beautiful medieval city. Just uh, appeared in the records in the 10th century, and since then has developed and has, uh, they call it the city of the bay windows. Anything between 171 and 300, depending on the uh, details you get from various sources, but suffice it to say, Renaissance architecture is very much in evidence in this town. It's one of four towns that are north of the Rhine, so we're actually incredibly close to Germany here, just about as north, in, uh, far north in Switzerland as you can possibly get. Now the weather conditions I can tell you today are uh, representative of these pictures as well. It's uh, just about mid-twenties centigrade after the sweltering heat of the first few days followed by the rain to uh, Villar and the rain again into La Ponte on stage six and then the uh, pretty cold conditions at the time from back yesterday well we're back to the balmy sunshine but it's well absolutely ideal conditions for the riders today So that's uh, Schaffhausen, 36,000 of a population, swelled considerably by the uh, crowd who've come to see how Tour de Suisse is going to play out with uh, Simon Spielak in the familiar position. He's in the yellow jersey as overall race leader. Won this race two years ago. He knows what it takes to win a nine-day stage race. That's in Norman Hansen. has a scant margin of just one point and cut a very serious figure at the start line in marked contrast to the leader of the points competition who's won this jersey on five previous occasions. Sagan gets the food in. Matthias Frank, disappointment for him yesterday, but still very much uh, to the fore. And the best Swiss rider for AG Tour Le Mondial. Riders sent into action. Not much hanging around. Immediately, the pace ramped up. By the time the final riders came across the finish line, I can tell you they were going in a fair clip. So no neutralized section meant that the riders were straight into action and no surprise that the uh, blue jersey of Lasse Norman Hansen 
straight into his effort to try and race clear. It took uh, Nick van der Leijken, who was just one point behind Lasse Norman Hansen. Well, it took him a little while to get across, caught napping a little bit at the start. At the assistance of a teammate just to make the junction. And van der Leijken arrived just in time for the uh, sprint for the first of eight uh, mountains climbs. That one went the way of Lasse Norman Hansen. We've had a couple of laps since. And uh, the riders very much into their effort. One minute and 43 seconds is about the maximum advantage that those uh, four riders now that are clear of the field have enjoyed. So they're not letting them off the leash. The bunch are uh, charging along at a fair clip. And they're certainly keeping the breakaway group honest. Four riders clear. It was a fifth that attempted to race across the uh, uh, AG Tour Le Mondial rider, Nico Dens, but he left his effort too late and there was no chance of uh, chasing across with four riders up front. Contributing well, and Simon Spilak, splendid in yellow for the first time in the 2017 Tour de Suisse. With that 52 second margin now over Damiano Caruso, the leader two days ago. Steven Kreuzvik climbed well, but uh, finds himself third going into the penultimate day of racing. And look at the way the bunch is stretched thin. There's a lot of riders really feeling tender legs and struggling to get back into the effort and Sondra Holstenger will be hoping uh, here at the back the AG Tuola Mondial rider that he can find his legs they've been found wanting a little bit so far 15th uh, across the line on stage five one of two sprint stages we've had we greet the riders back to the start finish area once more in front of the Schaffhausen Football Club Stadium and there you get them Jaco Venter on the front Followed in turn by Lasse Norman Hansen of Aqua Blue Sport. It's his third day in the breakaway. He leads the competition for the most amount of kilometers spent out front in the race. And that's uh, why he's got that distinctive gold slash yellow number on his back. Yellow Elise is the rider in, uh, in the red uh, jersey at the back. And Nick van der Leijke here in the orange jersey, orange white of Team Rompot. And Nick van der Leijke is the man that is challenging Lasse Norman Hansen for this points competition. Raced across, managed to get there in time for the sprint, but uh, Hansen has beaten him at each of the first three sprints. Now, they're category three hills, three, two, and one points on offer uh, for the summit of each of the uh, eight hills that are on offer today. And uh, that means that they've got fight for every morsel, haven't they? Because he, he's gained a point at each of the first three sprints uh, at the top of those climbs. And that, by my calculations, means that he's got a four-point lead in this mountains competition. So it's still uh, by no means certain that Lasse Norman Hansen will win it, but he's got the better of Nick van der Leijke so far as we pick up uh, Matthias Frank. Frank seems a little exercised. He's just back with the chief gun there, running behind the main peloton. And I, did I catch the uh, phrase too dangerous, trop dangereux? Is it to say that there might be an issue with the uh, is it the parkour they're presented, or is it some way that the uh, the marshalling? Well, we won't speculate. Suffice it to say that Matthias Frank seems a little exercised about some difficulty that uh, he's encountered so far. So been a difficult couple of days for the uh, best Swiss rider. He's managed to smile on the podium, but, uh, well, his team, AG Tuorle Le Mondial, edged out of contention yesterday. Still, he sits sixth overall, and he'll race on and hope for more glory in the next couple of days. The peloton flashed through sight. They are one minute and 45 seconds behind the three, four riders indeed up front, racing for glory on the penultimate day of racing in Tour de Suisse. The crowd are out in force. Absolutely fabulous crowd here today. They really have outlined the entire length of this uh, 12 and a half kilometer circuit alongside me once more to uh, run the rule over the riders there's some riders you might say in the tour de suisse stage eight of 2017 is brian smith and uh, brian no surprise about the two riders that are in there we've also got yellow Elise and jack oventer and this uh, breakaway group well they're having it put up to them a little bit by the bunch they're not letting them off the leash too easily no, there's a big opportunity here for uh, a stage win. Got to remember, this is the last opportunity for many of the teams. A lot of teams coming out this uh, Tour de Suisse empty-handed. It's okay, we've got a time trial tomorrow. But uh, I think the GC uh, teams want to uh, just control things. And that's, I think, why 
Matthias Frank has been back. He was a little, a little bit worried uh, because uh, this is only 100 kilometres, eight times round this lap of the uh, 12.5. And they're going to race at full gas. Uh, I think uh, the main favourite has, of the day has to be uh, um, the world champion, Pira Sagan. I noticed in a, in a run in with about 30 kilometres to go, the, uh, the truck uh, had moved over to the side of the road, waiting for the riders in the bus. They were going to jump on the bikes and ride in the last uh, kind of 30 kilometres. Many of the teams would have done that as well, purely because they knew it was going to start fast and furious. The one rider, uh, we started with the uh, 146 riders, Declan. One rider, I've noticed already, who's been, uh, I think he's, he's climbed off already, uh, but he was dropped in the first lap, and that was um, uh, Danny Van Poppel of Team Sky. Well, Danny Van Poppel, that's uh, such a disappointment for him. He was the last rider across the line at the top of the uh, Tiefenbach yesterday, and obviously a cruel, cruel day for many of the riders already suffering after two mountain stages and uh, to the top of the Tiefenbach. Not uh, the easiest of destinations at any point after uh, seven tough days of racing. Well, suffice it to say, Danny Van Poppel feeling the effects of this week, or is it another issue, an injury perhaps that he's carrying, or maybe he's trying to save his legs for battles to come, who knows? So Danny Van Poppel, a non-starter today. Several non-finishers yesterday. And from the initial 176 riders that set out the outset of this uh, bike race last Saturday. Now we're down to just 145 still in contention, and uh, four of those out front, one and three quarter minutes advantage. Inside 60 kilometers to go. Uh, Jack Venter on the front for uh, South Africa and for Dimension Data. 30 year old national champion last year. It's that title uh, a couple of months ago. Venter, strong, powerful rider for the Dimension Data squad. He's been with this team pretty much since the outset, since they were a continental level team. Short uh, sojourn with the Verandas Willems squad, but pretty much uh, loyal to the MTN Quebec squad as it was. Uh, the Dimension Data team, the African team, represented by their African rider, Jack Venter, just uh, riding to the back of the group here. Meanwhile, on the front of the peloton, it is the Katusha squad. They've got the race lead. They've got what they wanted yesterday. Superb work setting up Simon Spielak on that climb yesterday, particularly by Rain Taramai, who did a long, long stretch uh, out front on the finishing climb. And uh, the Katusha squad have control of the race now, and uh, Simon Spielak looks in fine form. Yeah, of course he does. Uh, he was struggling a little bit the, uh, the day before in the climb, uh, but they came out fighting and they really took it on. So hats off to uh, Katusha and Spielak for riding a really strong uh, climb yesterday and uh, wrestling the uh, yellow jersey off everybody else. And I think putting himself in the position of uh, possibly winning for the second time, the, um, the Tour de Suisse. I just want to say a happy birthday to uh, Eddie Merckx today, former winner of the Tour de Suisse in 1974 turns 72 to today so uh, happy birthday to what many people say the best cyclist ever well there'll be a few contradictions yeah he won a few, few other races apart from Tour de Suisse didn't he extraordinary Paul Morris 5 Tour de France and an all time record in the classics that uh, one wonders will it ever be beaten in all three Grand Tours and pretty much everything besides These riders race in his wheel tracks. Venter in front of Lasse Norman Hansen. They're on the climb once more. Nick van der Leike takes up position behind his rival in this mountains competition, and it's keeping us interested, no doubt about it. Lasse Norman Hansen has been more than equal to the challenge of van der Leike on the first uh, three hills. Van der Leike, of course, arrived late over to the break, mapping a little bit, had to uh, get the assistance of a teammate and just made the junction before the first uh, time over that climb. But it is. Not by any stretch of the imagination, a, uh, an alpine ascent. And it is suiting the power numbers that Lasse Norman Hansen is able to, is able to develop. And uh, Lasse Norman Hansen's got to lead it out this time around. Yellow Alace, third in line here, has been third at the first uh, three hills. He's happy to ride it through and kind of like it, not able to contend there. So just terrific tempo being set on the front by Lasse Norman Hansen. Well, there you have it. Uh, Lasse Norman Hansen goes five points clear now, having headed Nick van der Leyen, Yellow Willace. So the mountains competition looking 
ever more secure, you might say, on the shoulders of the uh, big Danish rider. Team Aqua Blue Sport, what a week they are having. I think uh, on only one of the breakaways they haven't been involved, and of course they took that extraordinary and wonderful, heartwarming, I think, stage victory, courtesy of Larry Warbass, uh, up to Villar on stage four, and it was uh, well, one of my highlights of the week, the sheer raw emotion displayed by Larry Warbass, the young American, as he celebrated his first ever professional victory at the age of 26. Warbass, I think, uh, gave us some indication of just uh, how difficult it is to win a professional bike race. A rider of some considerable talent. And the Aqua Blue Sport team have got uh, a useful acquisition. Riders struggling a little bit. I tell you what, the tempo that uh, Yuri Sagan is setting here, Sabora Hanskra and the Katusha squads are the two teams that have put riders onto the front of the peloton. And the Bora Hanskra squad, of course, have had Peter Sagan to look after. 14th stage victory for him earlier in the week. And the last time that we raced into Schaffhausen was back in 2011. This is the 10th uh, occasion that this town has played host to a stage of Tour de Suisse. And uh, similarly in 2011, they had a road stage that arrived in as opposed to a circuit race, and then it finished with a time trial the following day. And the, uh, the road stage went the way of uh, Peter Sagan. Can he repeat the alchemy? And that was his second stage success in Tour de Suisse history, having taken his first stage victory earlier in that particular race. Uh, Peter Sagan knows exactly what it is to take a victory in Schaffhausen. There's the Schwaben Tour in the old town of Schaffhausen. It uh, dates all the way back to 1361. Although it has uh, had various alterations and uh, that's formed the uh, the century the century you might say the the guard at the edge of this town and now it's been absorbed really by the uh, the urban sprawl such as it is of the Schaffhausen squad the bell tower installed in 1782 they were destroyed completely destroyed by a fire in 1932 they managed to uh, do a wonderful job of restoring them That was the Schwaben Tour. Uh, it's a wonderful tour, isn't it? As we add up the points, Lasse Norman Hansen. Another three points towards his total. Nick van der Leica not able to contest this sprint last lap round. Is he, is he just running out of legs, or was that uh, was that a tactic, or what's the? Uh, how's he going to play it from now to the end? Well, after the uh, the second time up, he went straight onto his radio. Uh, I think it's a case of look. I don't think uh, there's a possibility of you, you beating him now. Uh, he seems to have the legs all the time. Um, in the second climb, he tried to, uh, to take it on from the front. He really went gave it 100%, but Lassie Norman Hansen just rode past him pretty much on the saddle for the last 20-odd uh, metres and, and took the, uh, the maximum point. So he was straight on the radio. And I think he said, look, this guy's too strong. And instead of uh, sprint, 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 it's, uh, they want to stay, uh, try and stay in the lead and uh, you know look towards uh, doing something in the stage. Uh, we're almost halfway through the stage today of 100 kilometres and uh, there's still a, an opportunity here. I think it would be very difficult, but you've got to be in the breakaway to have a chance, which he is. Uh, you can waste energy sprinting for second place. So they want to control things. They want to, to, to try and stay away. For Katusha at the front of the peloton, that's, they're happy enough to, uh, to ride tempo because there's nobody there of uh, any note when it comes to the general classification. The best is... Uh, Nick van der Leijke from Romport at 55 minutes and 46 seconds. So they can sit in the VIP and have a coffee and, and, and wait for half an hour and continue racing as far as they're concerned. So, but the other red jerseys at the front are uh, Trek Segafredo. Trek Segafredo thinking and thinking a little bit more desperately of, of trying to get something out of this race because uh, Degen Cole hasn't been firing uh, too well. Uh, the uh, general manager came a couple of days ago. He left, away, he left uh, slightly disappointed. But they put one rider on the front, and they've got, I think, a two-pronged attack. Look, with this climb coming um, fairly close to the, uh, the finishing line, and uh, there's an opportunity to go from the, uh, the final climb in towards the finish, so we may get a, a, an opportunity like we had on uh, stage two, where uh, some attacks went, and then it all came back together. But I think the favourite still has to be uh, Bora Hansgrohe. It's a short stage. They have ridden in, they have warmed up. 
uh, they are trying to bring uh, Peter Sagan. Uh, he's a 15 stage win today. So Bora Hansker know what they want, and the Trek Segafredo squad representing John Degenkolb was third on stage three, but a rider of his caliber. And only stage wins really count. And so many teams and riders with different agendas throughout the day. And uh, Lassie Norman Hansen is a top, top track rider, of course. The Olympic Omnium champion back in 2012 in London. And then uh, defended that title with a bronze medal performance in Rio at last autumn. And Lassie Norman Hansen on a flat road is as strong as any rider in the peloton and very useful legs to have in there. Van, Van der Leike still equal to the task and Yelly Wallace as well has been up the road uh, this week. He was in the break on stage six. Stage that raced to uh, La Punta over the Albula Pass. Been a pretty uh, quick Tour de Suisse so far. The average almost 40 kilometers an hour. And indeed, the uh, prologue that kicked it all off at the beginning of the week, it seems a long time ago now, doesn't it? Uh, Rowan, Rowan Dennis taking that prologue at an average speed of 56.25 kilometers an hour, which is the fastest ever uh, stage of Tour de Suisse. I think that was Sunderhall Stenger still uh, hanging on at the back of the peloton. The peloton's absolutely lined out here. So just under 52 kilometers remaining on stage eight of Tour de Suisse 2017. The peloton is lined out as they chase down the breakaway group. Almost two minutes advantage now for the four riders who've been clear since the very earliest stages of this uh, short stage, 100 kilometers in total, eight laps uh, of a 12 and a half kilometer circuit. The peloton being propelled under the strength and in the service of Peter Sagan is Jure Sagan, his elder brother. The reigning champion of Slovakia. Will he still have that jersey a week from now? He will. Will he have it the day after? That's the question, I suppose, isn't it? So the uh, national championships of Europe generally taking place on the final Sunday before the Tour de France. And that will be next week. He's the four riders in the breakaway with uh, Yellow Wallace, 28-year-old Belgian. Up front, and toiling effectively in the sunshine. To Barstor of Landren in 2015, Paris Tour, of course, in 2014, and the uh, GP Cerami, Cerami in uh, 2016. coming in to complete yet another lap for the riders out front down to the uh, final 50 kilometers we're at the halfway stage of stage eight four laps completed four laps to go last Norman Hansen leads them through with the crowd banging the boards They're enjoying the opportunity to see the riders on a regular basis the style of racing presented by this uh, circuit racing is certainly a popular one with spectators yeah, I think so. Off the back of the uh, Ham series recently, uh, the, uh, the spectators got an, an opportunity, and, and I believe some people are relating this to the uh, to the Hammer series and what they've seen. And uh, certainly uh, helps the crowds. It gives them opportunities. In fact, it gives them uh, eight opportunities to see uh, you know the race past. There's the uh, Muno, the 16th century fortification, right in the centre of this uh, beautiful Swiss city of Schaffhausen. Uh, circular architecture surrounded by vineyards and uh, very much serves as the symbol of uh, Schaffhausen it's attached to pretty much all the tourist literature and every uh, every logo and it is an established part of the brand of a city that is an important tourist destination as I've said for uh, for Swiss and of course for uh, for German tourists very popular with German tourists so we're so close to the border here Indeed, Schaffhausen suffered during the Second World War. Although Switzerland was neutral, it did uh, suffer bombing in error by the uh, US, US Air Force. And a little bit off beam and tragic moment for the city. 
inside 50 kilometers to go. Trek Segafredo now to contribute to uh, Bora Hansgrohe and uh, Katusha in the efforts to close down the group of four riders up front. We're really pushing on. They're pushing on because this is a short stage, but still with fully 50 kilometers to go, it's well within the compass of this large group behind to close those four riders down should they uh, see fit, should they be coordinated and organized enough to do it. The riders out front, though, will hope that they're a little bit asleep at the wheel and that they make the error of calculation and they allow them to uh, stay out front for long enough and that the four out front will have enough energy to uh, hold them off in the finale. Doesn't always happen, doesn't often happen, but when it, it does happen, and when it does, it's always fascinating, isn't it? Harry Warbass, uh, of course, uh, surviving from the early break to take victory. Up to uh, Villar on stage four. Very different character of a stage, of course, but uh, showing that it can be done from the early break. Peter Sagan is uh, very relaxed, always moving around his bike, isn't he? So comfortable. You just put the bike anywhere. Across the railway tracks once more. Bunch pressing on. It's been a hectic week of uh, racing action. Began with that uh, prologue time trial that I mentioned a little earlier on in Ham. We had uh, two stages in succession. Rowan Dennis, of course, taking the pro. Well, it wasn't a prologue, wasn't it? Stage one. They called it both. Took that ahead of his uh, teammate Stefan Kung by uh, fully eight seconds, which was a very impressive margin. Matthias Brandler is no longer in the race. Uh, finished third on that occasion. Stage two. Uh, the circuit race, a much larger circuit race as we, uh, as Trentin indeed, finds himself off the back of the uh, group and having to work his way back up through the order. And uh, Trentin is a rider that uh, the Quick Step squad will be looking to later on today. Yeah, for sure. He's the rider that is very capable of it, not really panicking, just coming around out the corner. The, the, the car's easing off, allowing them to sweep uh, around the corner, and then uh, he'll uh, just ease onto the uh, bumper of one of the uh, team cars there and uh, make his way back into the peloton. But uh, this pace has uh, been relentless uh, right from the start of the uh, breakaway four riders, Venter, Wallace, Hansen, uh, Van der Leijke, not kind of letting up, just holding uh, just under two minutes advantage. But uh, the peloton being controlled by Trek Segafredo with Carl Ryan and Yuri Sagan is up there for Bora, and uh, I think it's uh, Losada is up there for uh, Katusha. So uh, three teams trying to control four riders in front. Well, that's just about as hard as they're going, which is uh, pretty much flat out at the moment, isn't it? Yellow Wallace goes to the front. It's a short stage. Brian has mentioned some of the teams uh, finding that it was so short that they needed a, a healthy warm-up of about an hour just to pedal those legs and pedal the effort of the uh, climb up to the teeth and back out of those legs. You can see as the way the uh, flags droop on the flagpoles, no, the wind not really a factor today. No, not at all, uh, especially in a circuit like this, it's uh, constantly changing, but it's uh, it's only uh, blowing about uh, 10 kilometers an hour at the moment, so it's, uh, and it's actually helping them along the finishing area, but we'll look at the uh, finishing area, the uh, trees are fluttering a little bit, but uh, yeah, no, a perfect day, if you like the heat, uh, definitely no wind, and that's not gonna hamper uh, anything on this uh, circuit here. Well, no panic from Matteo Trentin, who will look to glory a little bit later on. Finished eighth on the uh, third stage and third on stage five. They were the sprint opportunities, such as they were. Up into Bern on stage three, of course, uh, victory going to Michael Matthews. But uh, plenty of the uh, GC contenders and the strong climbers able to get involved in the action in that closing stages up that steep hill, which played a role in the Tour de France last year. Trentin has a little bit of company just to help him back and help him back up uh, through the group. Just like Brambilla. Another stage winner in Giro d'Italia. Look at the speed that they're able to rev when they're sitting on the bumper. And given the pace of the peloton, it is remarkable that they're not making any significant inroads into the uh, advantage of the riders up front. Now, they'll be comfortable with that fact. They'll understand exactly uh, how what the distance is to the finish. Not uh, be too keen to close it down too early, but uh, by the same token, given the speed of the bunch, it uh, 
it does reflect very well indeed on the four riders up front and the work they're doing at the moment. Yeah, this uh, Wallace, Hansen, Venter, Van der Leijk, uh, the quality uh, strong riders in the, in the breakaway. So they're, uh, they've, they've stopped battling out for the King of the Mountains. They know that uh, there's an opportunity here. It's going to be a short, fast stage and uh, three teams are chasing. But uh, obviously it's uh, still early. Still 45 kilometers to go, uh, but uh, this is uh, this is the liking to uh, a Belgian Kermes. It's about the same uh, lap distance, 12 and a half kilometers, and uh, a lot of the the Belgian riders will be used to this type of racing and, and love this type of racing. That doesn't seem much of a problem either for uh, Matteo Trentin or Brambilla just in front of him. Does he want to have a little bit of a conversation with the commissar? Or? Is. So it's a succession of uh, riders heading back to the chief comp for a bit of a chat. Meanwhile, here is Sagan rides along at the front as if he's just out for an afternoon stroll. I can assure you the effort he's putting into the pedals is setting a relentless tempo. Two minutes advantage now. That's the Norman Hansen in front of Nick van der Leijke as they hit the hill once more. Yeah, just round the corner here. No contest from uh, van der Leijke this time, just saving the energy. All four of them working well together to try and uh, keep away from the peloton. So after the first three, couple of sprints, van der Leijke on the radio said to his team, I can't get the better of Hansen, he's too strong. And uh, I just want him to stay in the breakaway. He'll take uh, second in that competition, but it does look as if uh, Lassie Norman Hansen taking these three points, he cannot be beaten now. Well, he certainly can't be beaten as long as he continues to score in any manner uh, on these uh, on these hills. Nine points left. Is he uh, a little bit clear? While Van der Leijk is clearly not uh, contesting it. So conversation going on. Yelly Wallace continuing to keep the riders honest and keep them uh, organised. Here is uh, another one of the uh, sites that defines Schaffhausen. It's the uh, Rheinfalls that are nearby. It's the largest uh, plain waterfall in Europe. Extraordinary statistics. 150 meters wide, 23 meters high. Seventeen thousand years old, they say something in the order of about 700,000 litres a second is plunging down those falls. No fish are able to, uh, to go up against them, although apparently some eels can worm their way up through, given to understand, and a great uh, destination for tourists, as you might expect. The Rhine Falls created in the last ice age, somewhere between 14 and uh, 17,000 years ago. Two minutes and four seconds, despite the uh, charge along on the front of the peloton, the gap is going out, that little flurry of activity up the last climb, such as it was, uh, going the way of the breakaway group because they've stretched just a few seconds clear. So it's all uh, very much going to plan for the breakaway and indeed for the bunch at the moment an understanding between the two groups about exactly what they have. Daniel Fomenik here for the Astana squad. They've had a tough week. Of course, the reigning champion Miguel Angel Lopez forced to retire after a crash a couple of days ago, three days ago, and uh, the young Colombian rider, very chastening experience on the defense of his title. Peo Bilbao, their best place rider, 10th overall, four minutes and 10 seconds back, and he has indeed enhanced his reputation this week. Peo Bilbao, strong uh, Spanish rider with the Astana squad. Now, interesting that uh, Team Sunweb have put a rider into action. Yes, they have. Uh, they're getting involved. There's um, a couple of reasons why uh, you've got uh, the uh, the points competition, and you've also got the, uh, the stage. Uh, Matthews has already won a stage uh, in uh, Bern, beating convincingly uh, Sagan and uh, Degenkolb. I still think that Sagan in this type of finish would be uh, better suited, but 
there are uh, three sprints coming up. The first one comes in uh, 10 kilometers time and, and possibly uh, Sunweb coming towards the front, maybe be thinking 10 kilometers, try maybe to try and shut this uh, breakaway down and, and think of that points competition because uh, I'm not too sure that um, Michael Matthews will possibly be uh, fast enough, certainly on this uh, sprint to beat the likes of this again. Looks like Albert Timmer at the front for uh, Team Sunweb. Michael Matthews has a stage victory this week, of course, so has uh, certainly been a productive uh, visit for the Australian rider. Racing up the hill into Bern to take that stage three success, but uh, for Michael Matthews, can he get ahead of uh, Peter Sagan in the points competition? Well, the situation is, as uh, Brian has said, it's an eight-point advantage with six points at each of the three intermediate sprints for the first rider across the line. Now, at the moment, that's very much going the way of the uh, the three riders, well, three of the four riders in the breakaway group up front, should they manage to chase them down. And remember, there are those three intermediate sprints and sprints on the line at the conclusion of affairs as well. There's the pro provisional situation with a six-point lead for Lassie Norman Hansen over Nick van der Leijke. It's still statistically possible for van der Leijke to get ahead of Lassie Norman Hansen, but as long as Hansen remains in this breakaway, it is going to be, I think, virtually impossible for uh, Nick van der Leijke uh, to wrest that blue jersey from the shoulders of the big Danish rider. And he's pretty much uh, secured the full pedalon as well for the uh, number of kilometers spent out front. He had a 20 kilometer advantage over uh, his teammate Lars Petter Nordhaug after yesterday's uh, stage. Lars Petter Nordhaug, a couple of days in the breakaway, a couple of days in the breakaway too. Make that three now for, for uh, Lasse Norman Hansen. 282 kilometers in the break going into uh, today's stage. That's 282 kilometers spent out front in this bicycle race throughout the uh, throughout the uh, throughout the week and add another what almost 60 kilometers onto that. It's about 340 odd kilometers of riding out front of the peloton and uh, takes strong legs and a great ability to recover to be able to do that day in day out. It is, and that's what they, uh, they train for, they, they target uh, events like this, and uh, obviously going in with a plan is the best uh, way to do things. Um, Aqua Blue have set out with a plan, getting in the breakaways, taking the points in the King of the Mountains competition, and it's, it's really no surprise that it uh, looks like they are going to come away with the uh, King of the Mountains uh, jersey in the Tour de Suisse. And when you think back, the Tour de Suisse, it's a very hilly race. OK, Hansen is... Uh, Done it in the uh, first uh, couple of stages. Doing it again today, uh, and he's been lucky of the you know the, the way the points have been awarded. But uh, BMC have put a rider up towards the uh, front as well. Uh, so many teams. The thing is, Declan, you can get into this stage. Everybody thinks right. There's three teams riding in the front. We can afford to you can sit back and allow them keep our powder dry. But they're whacking round the circuit at uh, fair speed. You cannot. It, it comes at you quicker, so you have to put your riders up quicker and uh, try to uh, put them in with a chance of winning the stage. It's all getting pretty hectic, isn't it, as uh, we have a, an attack from uh, Team Sunwhip off the front, or is that a rider trying to get back in? Uh, just trying to get back in after uh, a little bit. Oh, indeed, it's... Uh, Matthews. Yeah, Matthews, as he uh, just... Uh, he's in a mechanical. He's in a mechanical. He's uh, got his teammate there. He's uh, just waiting for the cars. And the thing is, Declan, we went into that uh, corner there. The corner there, the car stopped because the bike riders can go around it quicker and uh, the gaps have appeared and uh, he'll just jump behind one of the cars and they'll take him back up towards the uh, back of the peloton. It, it wasn't intentional, the gap in the, in the convoy. It's because of that kind of hair, sharp hairpin corner. Uh, the, uh, the cars will stop, allow the riders to go around it, which actually naturally forces a gap in the uh, the convoy, but uh, the rest of the convoy will come round that corner. Michael Matthews knew, he was just easing up, waiting for the car, and uh, luckily his uh, old team of Orica Scots are uh, helping him back to the peloton. Yeah, there's uh, sort of an understood uh, accord in the in the, uh, in the the cavalcade, isn't there, between the team cars. This all evens out across the balance of a long season. You help my rider, I'll help your rider. As you say, he'll be uh, very much a friend to the uh, Orica Scott squad, having raced with them for so many years. But Team Sunweb, of course, had a rider on the front of the peloton for a little while, but they won't uh, be so keen to press on with their main sprinter, finding himself in the uh, cavalcade, albeit briefly. But there's an indication, Declan. You've uh, we've done another lap. 
and uh, on, on the lap. And, and I'll count them down as they, they cross the line this time. But uh, it was just under two minutes, uh, I think uh, one minute and 52 seconds. And uh, again, they're, they're hanging out there. The four of them are, are riding well. It's uh, difficult to, to bring these riders back. And that's why more teams have come towards the front because they realise strong breakaway, they need respect. And uh, this time around, it's going to be uh, just under one minute and 47 seconds. Well, the gap's come down a little bit, but they're another lap out front. Jacko Venter leads the four riders in the breakaway group on the penultimate stage of Tour de Suisse across the line to complete another effort. And uh, they're down to 37 and a half kilometers remaining. Five uh, laps uh, completed. Down to the final, final four, three, three, yeah. Eight laps in total, of course. Michael Matthews still very much in the cars. And just a little bit of a sticky moment for the Aussie sprinter. Took that victory, as I said, up into uh, Bern on stage three. Stage two having gone the way of uh, Philippe Gilbert. The circuit race around Cam and uh, Matthews. 26-year-old Aussie. Three stages of uh, the Tour of Spain, two stages of the Giro in the past, and of course that single stage victory in the Tour de France that completed his collection of Grand Tour stage victories. Former under-23 world champion, he's been a bronze medalist in the elite race as well. Now time to uh, breathe a sigh of relief, but he'll try and work his way up towards the front as quickly as possible because this is not the kind of circuit that you want to find yourself down the back for too long. No, not at all. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the roads are wide enough. It's, uh, it's easy enough to kind of sit in the peloton. OK, it's, it's fast. You can see a lot of the riders uh, happy uh, with the, uh, the situation at the moment. But uh, the uh, breakaway riding really well. Michael Matthews found himself back uh, to the back of the peloton. This is uh, one of the uh, sprint laps. So that on this lap, there is uh, the first of the sprints. But uh, with the four riders still away, uh, I cannot see. This is. I think this is going to go into the last lap. And if it goes into the last lap, I cannot see uh, anybody benefiting in the points classification apart from the uh, the riders that are in the, the leading group of four. Uh, just under four kilometres to that uh, first sprint of the day. First sprint of three. Out of the last three laps of 12 and a half kilometers in this eight lap circuit race is certainly proving a very healthy workout indeed for the riders in the peloton of the final road stage of Tour de Suisse 2017. Lots of faces, uh, pictures of concentration, a few faces, I think, betraying the efforts of the week and the efforts uh, involved in staying this pace. The moment uh, we're given to understand the average speed of the race is 44.4 kilometers per hour fastest ever stage in uh, tour de suisse history 46.3 i believe we'll have to check the record books for that but uh, i do know it's over 46 kilometers per hour and the speed likely to ramp up a little bit as we get closer to the end yeah a little bit and that was the uh, urs Frohler, the sprinter that wanted to but that was a stage that was uh, i think predominantly the uh, first part of the race was uh, downhill it wasn't on the circuit and this one has a little bit of a hill in it, such as uh, such as it is. It's providing and has provided us with a little bit of entertainment on the King of the Mountains competition. And these riders starting to feel it, aren't they? Venter rolls through. That's in Orman Hansen out of that uh, last corner. Just out of the saddle. Maintained position in the wheel of Venter. And Peter Sagan in those that black jersey with those uh, white stripes, white blocks, uh, you might call them. On his sleeves, makes it a little bit easier to pick him out. In the center of the shot at the moment, he's got two Bora Hansker riders in front of him in that uh, black jersey that he's wearing, those uh, white sleeves, just a little bit different in character. That's the leader of the points competition. That's the man that has won 14 stages in the past of Tour de Suisse. Looks very relaxed at the moment, always chatting, isn't he? <laughs> find, has to find something to uh, distract him and divert him. He has said in the past that he sometimes finds uh, long road races a little bit dull, but this one is far from long and it's far from dull. Yeah, and he's uh, one of these riders that uh, prefers to race than train as well. Uh, so you, you have to, you have to keep him, uh, keep him going, keep him entertained, and uh, he entertains himself. He, he likes uh, having a, a chat to many other riders, and uh, he's very relaxed on the bike. But you can just also see BMC uh, looking uh, 
towards the front with a little bit of intent. And I really wouldn't be surprised if we saw the Olympic champion, uh, Greg Van Avermaet, to uh, have a crack in the last lap. Yes, Greg Van Avermaet, we saw on the, uh, on the stage into Bern that Van Avermaet wasn't of a mind to try his, uh, his luck in the sprint and went for an early, or at least a late, late attack. Are we going to see something similar from the Olympic champion? Is that uh, what you might imagine might be the thinking? The thing is, it's, uh, I alluded to this earlier on, it's, uh, it's very similar to uh, a Belgian Kermes, fast, furious. OK, a Belgian Kermes is uh, 160 kilometres, this is 100. But it's, uh, it lends itself to that type of racing, and uh, a lot of the Belgians are used to this. And I think um, that uh, many of the Belgians Maybe Philip Gilbert as well might uh, want to have a go in this uh, last lap because they know that if they come in, this is the last chance. Time trial tomorrow. They know that uh, if they come to the uh, the finish, uh, Peter Sagan is uh, the favourite to win the stage. So first sprint of the day goes the way of Yellow Will Ace. Uh, Jack Oventer and Lassie Norman Hansen follow him across the line. They've got some points towards the points competition and they've also got some bonus seconds to uh, slash from there. Uh, uh, overall time, not that it's of any consequence to these riders. The best placed of them is, uh, well, almost an hour down. So suffice it to say, it's all about stage honours for these riders out front. Can they survive? One minute, 43 seconds, one and three quarter minutes. Steadily shrinking. And I think the pace on the bunch, well, we've got the telltale signs of the bunch stretched thin. Well, uh, well he takes the uh, six points there, which uh, he's already got three, which moves him up to... Uh, about uh, 17th position in that points classification. If he continues to, to do that, he'll move up if he takes maximum points in the next one to uh, uh, fifth place in that competition. And then again, uh, that's uh, without uh, saying the uh, the points on the finishing line. If he takes another six points, then he could go into the, uh, the final sprint, sitting in second place in that points competition. Well, that will be interesting, wouldn't it? Should he uh, take the points and survive through to the finish? We could see a bit of a revolution in the, uh, in the order in the points competition one minute and 40 seconds and the bunch well they've no points on offer at the first sprint of the day but uh, they're charging along at a fierce rate I think that can only be the, the only phrase for it and immediately following that uh, sprint point the riders into ramping up that next climb coming uh, Thick and fast. And there's the uh, popular baths, bathing place, the Rye Body. And uh, the ideal venue for taking the waters, taking the waters of the Rhine. The Rhine flowing through here, fed by. Uh, Led by the tributary of the Rhine that uh, flows through Schaffhausen. And not too many out swimming today. They're probably all out watching Tour de Suisse, and who will blame them? Into the climb once more. Lasse Norman Hansen will maintain concentration, maintain the focus, maintain his grip on this blue jersey competition. And Nick van der Leijke continues to score in second position, but is not going to contest. the finishing order of the top three across uh, every single climb. That's the sixth climb we've had has been uh, Lassie Norman Hansen, Nick van der Leijke and Yellow Elise. In fact, Jack Oventer not interested. I've stopped writing it down now. It's just like Groundhog Day. Oh, I have to write them down. Keep them all down. <laughs> 31.6 kilometres remaining on stage eight, the penultimate stage of Tour de Suisse. Lassie Norman Hansen adds another three points towards his uh, hole in the mountains classification but uh, now the attention and the focus i think for all four riders up front is on the battle to try and stay clear of the peloton the peloton i think uh, sensing that that is as you say a break up front that deserves respect and they're starting to close it down there are more teams involved so a, a very interesting push from uh, from the bmc squad around about the time that uh, michael matthews was in the cars and uh, they were just showing the face and putting riders on the front and pushing to the four, as indeed are Trek Segafredo for John Degenkolb. And the Katusha squad maintaining position near the front. And for them, Simon Spilak is their main agenda. The overall race leader with that 52 second advantage on overall general classification. 
needs to be kept out of trouble. Spilak, 30 years of age now, it's his sixth season with the uh, Katusha squad, ex uh, Lamprey rider. Around a long time, hasn't he? Well, I think we can officially say that uh, Lassie Norman Hansen has won that uh, competition, cal calculating uh, the uh, numbers now. Only uh, two claims to come, six points in offer. Uh, so he has uh, made a little bit of history, uh, winning the uh, first uh, World Tour competition jersey uh, for uh, Aqua Blue Sport, the Irish team. Yeah, not a bad week for uh, Rick Delaney's squad, is it? Because they've taken that uh, inaugural uh, race victory. It also happens to be an inaugural uh, World Tour race victory with that stage three, for stage four success from Larry Warbass, and uh, they've added to it now with that uh, mountains classification. Of course, comes with the asterisk that uh, Lassie Norman Hansen must ride through and complete tomorrow's stage to be awarded that jersey. But, uh, it's a uh, formality at this stage for Hansen as he races on inside a minute and a half advantage. Peloton really starting to press now. 30 kilometers remaining on stage eight of Tour de Suisse. And there's the bunch, the Slovakian flags for uh, Juris Sagan, and more particularly for Peter Sagan, forming a guard of honour for the bunch as they race through under those uh, long flagpoles. And the cowbell's not quite as sonorous as uh, some that you might have around here, but uh, the encouragement is gratefully received nonetheless. Nikias Arndt looks like he's uh, not enjoying this too much, is he? And it, he's an important part of the lead-out train for Michael Matthews. Yeah, he is. Uh, Yuri Sagan in the left-hand side as well. He's towards the back. He's done a, a lot of work in the first few laps, but uh, tiring off very quickly now. Uh, but uh, one minute and 15 seconds now, just under 30 kilometres. So it is coming down a little bit uh, quicker now. Well, with friends like that, it's Albert Timmer on the front for the Team Sunweb squad. And it's his teammate, Nicky Asarn, at the very back of the bunch, really suffering. Riders have got sore legs. They have raced this Tour de Suisse at pretty much a frenetic pace. The, uh, there's been no let-up through the mountain stages. You might have thought they might switch off in the early stages and save it for a, a GC fight on those finishing hills, but it hasn't worked out like that. And they plenty of riders are really feeling the effects after what's been a tough, tough week. And uh, a lot of faces are starting to show it now as the gap has come down to one minute and 10 seconds. The faces tell the story. The stopwatch confirms. Yellow Ace at the back of the group here. Looks uh, as strong as anyone in this breakaway group. Jack Oventer looks strong too, though. Yeah, he's a strong rider, uh, former national champion uh, of South Africa. A uh, strong team rider, doesn't get the uh, maybe the results he, he deserves. Uh, Lassie Norman Hansen, we already know, King of the Mountains officially now. Uh, nobody can beat him, he just has to cross the line uh, at the finish of uh, today's stage and finish the time trial within the limits. He'll take that jersey back uh, to Ireland and Denmark, of course. And uh, while he's a strong, strong rider, winner, former winner of uh, Eduardo Vlandern uh, from, a, from a breakaway, and uh, Nick uh, van der Leijke from Rompot, we've already seen him in the breakaways, strong, strong rider, so there's still a bit of work to be done by the bunch. Yeah, they're doing that work, aren't they? It's uh, much to the consternation of uh, several riders down towards the back. We picked out Sandra Holstanger, who's been sitting at the back for much of the afternoon, moved up a little bit, so it could have been just uh, perhaps paying it a little bit cagey. It's been a tough week. For Sandra Holstanger, who'll be asked to sprint, uh, one would expect, for the AG Tour Le Mondial squad. Picking it up on the front of the bunch, down towards the back. Arndt is uh, safely back in. And will look to move up. Try and put himself into a safer position next time they hit that climb. Running through the stage victory, stage four we mentioned. Uh, going the way of Larry Warbass, ahead of the GC fight with Damiano Caruso taking over the uh, yellow jersey on that occasion. 15 seconds from Stefan Kreuzvik. Then Peter Sagan taking his first uh, victory of the week. The man in shot here, the world champion. And Sagan sprinting in ahead of uh, Michael Albacini. Courtesy of a sort of an unintended lead out by Nicky Asarnt, actually, who's suffering at the back of the group at the moment. And uh, Peter Sagan spotting the danger of that late, late attack, early, early sprint by Nicky Asarnt, and then having the power to sustain the uh, effort right through to the line over 350 plus metres ahead of this man. Obviously, timed Michael Albacini, second uh, across the line. 
on stage five. Hasn't quite got that stage success that he so often tends to deliver on home soil, particularly in Tour of Romandie, but uh, Tour de Suisse has been a happy hunting ground for the grizzled Swiss veteran in years past as well, and he shows no signs of diminishing powers, does he, Albacini? And Domenico Pozzavivo taking the stage uh, six to La Ponte across the Albula Pass. Two tough climbs on that uh, on that occasion, and Domenico Pozzavivo descending to glory in treacherous conditions into La Ponte, breaking the hearts of uh, Michael Woods fans. And Michael Woods slipping back through the GC group to finish tenth on that occasion. Pozzavivo hanging on. Uh, clear of the other GC favourites and getting the yellow jersey by the narrowest of margins on that occasion. Just uh, fractions of a second ahead of Dam Damiano Caruso. Pozzavivo looking to retain that jersey yesterday on the climb to the Tiefenbach Ferner, but uh, it wasn't to be. Simon Spielak climbing like an eagle and taking over the dominant lead, you might say. Certainly. Uh, Certainly a strong advantage at the head of general classification. The man in the yellow jersey in the center of shot at the moment. Yellow jersey with the red shorts and the blue helmet. Surrounded by his Katusha teammates. Just in front of them, a couple of representatives of Team BMC in the predominantly black outfit with the red uh, red flashes. Daniel Oss to the fore. Breakaway group have put a few seconds in. Heading towards the uh, second sprint of the day, Lasse Norman Hansen is being encouraged to come through, coming down to the line with uh, two laps remaining. 25 kilometers of racing remaining now for Lasse Norman Hansen ahead of Nick van der Leike, Yellow Willis, and Jack Oventer. They pile it on. Just two laps remaining. They bang the boards, they send them on to glory. Can they possibly hang on? It's a long, long way. And the bunch are certainly being kept honest. Well, the bunch are charging along now, trying to close down the advantage of those four riders up front. They've been up front since the early knockings of this, the eighth and penultimate stage of Tour de Suisse. 2017, Trek Segafredo, Sunweb, Katusha, Bora Hanskra, they've all been trying to uh, maintain the gap to the uh, group up front. It's never been much more than two minutes. It's now down at uh, one minute and 12 seconds. But look at the way the bunch is absolutely lined out. It's a short stage and it's an extremely hard one. Sometimes uh, the shorter stages are amongst the hardest ones. Yeah, they are, uh, but it, uh, it keeps the riders concentrated and uh, for spectators and uh, riders, they would rather, rather have a shorter stage like this than a longer stage. But give you an indication of the uh, gaps, with uh, four laps to go, it was one minute and 55 seconds. With three get the laps to go, one minute and 47, they knocked off eight seconds only in that lap. That last lap, they've knocked off 33 seconds. You can just see the speed was uh, somewhat uh, increased, uh, one minute and 14, so... If they, uh, they keep this up, it's, uh, it's th these breakaway riders are going to go well into this, uh, last, uh, this last lap. Well, if they've got anything on the last lap, there's going to be a fair scatter on that last hill, isn't there? And how many of these riders will still be in contention as the Team Sunweb trying to set up Michael Matthews to do battle, to duke it out, we anticipate, with uh, Peter Sagan, John Degenkolb and the rest of the strongmen. Uh, just how many riders will have something for uh, perhaps a late, late attack on that last hill. We pick out Roy Cost on the right-hand side of shot. He's had a tough week, centre of shot. A uh, man who uh, is the current world champion. Cost, of course, a former world champion and plus plenty of fans here to support Peter Sagan. The established superstar of world cycling, always loves his racing in Switzerland. And the gap now for the first time comes down below a minute. 59 seconds showing for those four riders up front. This has been a sustained effort on the front of the bunch. And one wonders who's going to have the strength for a late, late attack should it happen. Perhaps uh, Philippe Gilbert will try and relive the glories of stage two. I don't think it's uh, this uh, much of an opportunity now because the, the pace re really needs to uh, increase a little bit more. You've got to remember, 
when we crossed the line with two laps to go there, it was 1 minute and 14 seconds. The lap previously, they'd knocked off 33 seconds. So you do the maths. They have to increase the pace in the peloton, so more riders have to come to the front. They have to increase the peloton, the, uh, the uh, work at the uh, front of the peloton. And that, if you thought that last lap was uh, fast, this lap has to be faster because uh, they have to take more time, more than 33 seconds out that uh, leading group. And that's the pattern, isn't it? 44.55 kilometers an hour. The average speed of this race is rising. And that uh, fact is something that uh, Jonathan Dibbon could easily have told you at the back of the bunch here. It's been a tough week, but he survived, hasn't he? He's pushed hard and he's going to complete the longest stage race outside of the uh, main Grand Tours. The young Englishman with Team Sky sitting in the uh, Lantern Rouge position, but he's, uh, he's had a tough week, but he certainly he went on the attack yesterday, which was which was pretty impressive stuff from the breakaway. The large breakaway ahead of the uh, the finishing climb. Spilak in the center of shot. This is Jay McCarthy on the front for the Bora Hasgro squad. It's the place to be, isn't it? Picking your line through the corner of the motorcycle with the cameraman on the board. Needs to uh, get his skates on because those riders are not holding back. A variety of options with uh, lots of road furniture in Schaffhausen on stage eight. At the back of the bunch, Samuel Lau of the uh, CCC Sprande Polkowice squad. They've done great work over the last couple of days and some uh, strong stage performances by Jan Hertz. Uh, they got a rider to uh, infiltrate the finishing sprinter. Could they perhaps try for a late attack? John Degenkolb, third place finish already this week. Frank Segafredo will want more. Nick van der Leijken now on the front of the uh, of the breakaway group, a diminutive Dutchman, 25 years of age, his second day in the breakaway group this week. Next lot of NL Jumbo. It's his second year with the uh, Rompot squad, having stepped down from the World Tour, but he's made a name for himself this week with his breakaway performances. Third in Volta Limburg uh, this year. It's been a strong year for uh, Nick van der Leijke. And he's showing the jersey to great effect. Yellow Wallace goes to the front. Jacko Venter, his body language suggests that he's in control. That's in Orman Hansen too. Still the strength to contribute. And uh, all four riders seem, well, they seem quite, uh, quite well balanced. It's a well balanced breakaway group that's putting it up to the riders in the, uh, in the bunch behind. 54 seconds they're controlling. Just inside, 20 kilometers to go. The bunch charging along on stage eight of Tour de Suisse and inside a minute advantage for the four riders who've been clear since the start of this short stage. Eight laps in total, 12 and a half uh, kilometers to the mats and then you come up with 100 kilometers even. Paddy Bevan twice uh, in the top six in the sprint so far this week. Yeah, the, uh, went through the uh, second sprint there, uh, Declan, and uh, it was a testament that Van der Leijke took the uh, the maximum points there in Nadu, Wallis was second, which uh, tells us that uh, Wallis, he could vault himself up to, uh, before the final sprint, of course, uh, to second in that competition, but they think they're in with a chance of uh, trying to stay away, and instead of battling out any of these points, no matter if it's King of the Mountains or sprints, they are just trying to hold off the peloton. Well, holding off the peloton would be a wonderful achievement, and it requires absolutely maximum focus. The uh, relatively minor consideration of the point jersey classification is not something that Yellow Will Ace is uh, focusing on at the moment. It's focusing on trying to hold off these riders. Last in Orman Hansen on the climb once more. Jacko Venter in front of the, uh, the big Danish rider. How much work has he got through this week? Last in Orman Hansen, and his face tells the story that this is starting to be a tough one. Van der Leijke still equal to the task. And the four riders locked in combat and well locked in an equal an equal objective and that's to try and hold off this uh, main bunch behind. It swarms wide. Here come the attacks. Team Quickstep have put a rider off the front and uh, with less than 20 kilometers remaining that will put the cat among the pigeons. Rambi has gone on the attack for a uh, Quickstep here so uh it's obvious that uh, Quickstep want to try and do something today. They want to try and make it hard, break it up. They don't want it to come down to a sprint. They're maybe not confident that uh, Matteo Trentin is uh, fast enough to beat the uh, likes of uh, Perisagan. 
So Lesser Norman Hansen takes uh, more points at the GPM. And Ultima Clown, it's of less uh, interest. The real uh, question is, what's Gianluca Brambia doing behind for uh, Team Quickstep? How much of an advantage has he got on the main peloton? Trying for glory, trying to race across solo to the four riders behind him, more particularly giving uh, Matteo Trentin and uh, his Quickstep teammates a bit of a free ride behind. Let's get a little look at this one as uh, Brambilla just uh, finds a space in the peloton. Well, I think it was a case, Declan, of the the, uh, the uh, team of uh, Bora and other teams that have been riding on the front uh, slightly east on that climb, and uh, Brambilla saw an opportunity there because uh, I think uh, a lot of the, the guys that have been riding on the front so far and a lot of the teams are starting to suffer a little bit now with the uh, relentless pace. So Brambilla saw an opportunity, decided to attack, but uh, I tell you what, they're going to have to muster themselves behind, not looking at the GC contenders, but the, the sprinter teams like uh, Bora Hansgrohe, they have to dig deep now if they want to bring these riders back. Well, Brambilla is absolutely flying. Is this a solo play or is this something that would have been called by the team car? Yeah, it's an opportunist move, and uh, they've obviously gone into this race with a, a bit of a plan, but uh, this, that was an opportunist move. When you come onto the climb, and everybody eased, UE came towards the front, and uh, everything eased. There was one rider from Bora. There's an opportunity. It eased a little bit. Bang, go for it. And uh, he will uh, try and go across to this group. Look, this, uh, this race could explode in this final lap because I believe that uh, a lot of the uh, sprinters teams are starting to suffer on this, uh, on this circuit here. 18 seconds for Brambia ahead of the uh, peloton. Is it even that? I wonder as he starts to uh, feel, the, uh, feel the effects of that attack, but he's closing in on the uh, breakaway group up front. Gianluca Brambilla, former stage victor in uh, Giro d'Italia, knows exactly what he needs to do to close one out. Has he got the legs to do it? Down to the final 17 and a half kilometers. Not going to happen on this occasion. But look at the front of the peloton now. You've got uh, Katusha. Katusha just controlling things. One rider up there for Bora Hansgro. You also get uh, some teammates up there of uh, Wales. They do believe that uh, these uh, riders can go very deep into this uh, last lap and it will take a, a, another concerted effort by the uh, sprinters teams to, to bring them back. There's the International Watch Company. It's uh, the only big watch company in this part of Switzerland. Most of the uh Horological uh, construction goes on in the western part of this nation, but uh, they're quite proud of the International Watch Company, the success that it's been in Schaffhaus. And now we focus once more on the uh, breakaway group up front. Four riders to the good. Lassie Norman Hansen feels the pinch. Jacko Venter goes to the front. He's looked very strong, measured, composed, and uh, really has been putting the watts down. That's putting it up to the yellow jersey group behind. But they're within 20 seconds now of uh, catching these four riders. What a brave and strong effort it's been, and we wonder whether, wonder whether that will be total cooperation uh, between those four riders as the bunch bears down on them. Team Katusha back to the front once more, trying to keep it safe for Simon Spilak, their overall race leader. Yes, uh, they look very strong, Katusha, at the front. Uh, a few of the sprinters' teams uh, depleted in numbers towards the front. They have to try and uh, take control, but uh, with uh, Katusha pushing on, it does look as if uh, these four riders uh, will be brought back inside the uh, last lap. Uh, they do look strong, don't they? And of course, they've got Baptiste uh, Plankert in their ranks, who is uh, no mean sprinter. Bonifacio, is he uh, starting to suffer a little bit? Are we picking up the uh, the bunch here? Nicolo Bonifacio is certainly a rider that we'd watch out for in the uh, Bahrain Merida squad, fifth on stage five for the diminutive uh, powerhouse sprinter. From Team Katusha, Plankard, we mentioned. Marco Haller as well has a good finish uh, if he's given the opportunity. But will they direct all their efforts to putting riders to the fore and making sure that they keep Simon Spilak in a perfect uh, position? Because uh, Spilak, a superb opportunity to take a second victory in Tour de Suisse. Got the time trial to come tomorrow. Just needs to get through this one. 19 seconds now, so they're not giving it away too easily. 16.2 kilometers. Make that 10 miles in old money around this uh, slow, slow hairpin. And a big acceleration point means lots of extra pain. And the brunch uh, starts to crack into pieces on the exit of that corner. Jay McCarthy absolutely flying. Hollenstein in his wheel for Team Katusha. The Swiss rider is a big, big engine, big unit. He's off to the Tour de France next week. He's had a pretty good week in Switzerland on home soil. Not a bad place to do your preparation, is it? The 
four riders up front on the penultimate stage of Tour de Suisse, inside 16 kilometers remaining. Not quite making it to the bell. But, uh, they've still got it in hand at the moment, and the bunch is absolutely flat chat to try and hold them off. Well, who's going to be last man standing is uh, Lasse Norman Hansen. Uh, secured his blue jersey at the leader of the King of the Mountains classification. He's done what he needed to do. He'll race through to glory and collect the final one uh, tomorrow. Hansen sits on the tail just behind the more upright figure of uh, Jacko Venter. The peloton in one stretched line not much more than 140 riders in it if even that at this point but uh, still they cover several hundred meters and that's because of the sustained effort of the katusha squad in the service of their overall race leader the sprinters teams setting up behind yeah they're starting to uh, to come towards the front this is a fast pace by uh, katusha and the reds they're really wanting to keep uh, spielak in a, a very safe place and the sprinter teams will, uh, they've done a lot of work already. They realize that uh, the break is only 13 seconds. So if uh, Katusha want to control things, then let them do it because uh, this is going to be really fast. And I'm expecting some more attacks when we uh, hit this uh, final climb. So Venture on the front has time to look around, make space for Hansen. No communication between the riders now. They know the situation. Van der Leike, altogether a different stance on the bike to Venter, isn't it? He's low and level. The other one is perhaps similar to Venter, the taller uh, man, sitting a little more upright. The yellow one is, though, churning that massive gear. Higher cadence for Venter behind him. Well, Ace, uh, former winner of Paris Tour, managed to survive in a breakaway to take that one down to eight seconds so it's pretty much all up within a kilometer and a half of getting the bell it looks like uh, just moments now before the bunch swallows them up and then they start to set up for the finishing sprint of course they have that uh, charge up that drag it wasn't much of a hill at the beginning of this stage but i tell you what plenty of riders will be suffering up this final ascent of the herblingen climb just over seven kilometers from now. That's the kite, next lap round. The peloton racing through northern Switzerland on stage eight of Tour de Suisse. Beautiful sunshine for the riders. The weather has, uh, well, it's been mixed through the week, but generally on the side of being pretty good. Blazing hot sunshine for the first three days and then uh, tempered somewhat by the rains on stages four and six and then Overcast and quite cold, really quite cold at 2,780 metres of the Tiefenbacher yesterday. Well, it's in marked contrast back in Switzerland today. And the breakaway group have been retained. The four riders, what a great job, not quite making it to the... And now Hollenstein, just a little bit of communication there. Well, he's not sure what, quite what that was about. They just slow down a little bit. <laughs> go too fast. Yeah, we're all together now, uh, one lap to go. So, uh, yeah, just uh, make sure you have the... Uh, our sprinters on the wheel because they, they can just distance themselves uh, off the front of the peloton. So one lap to go now. We get the bell, 12 and a half kilometers remaining, just one lap of this uh, wonderful city center circuit around a Schaffhausen, the beautiful medieval town, Stroke City, in the northern part of Switzerland, just a little bit south of the German border, above the Rhine. Mainly German speaking population, as you might imagine. Uh, quite a percentage as well from uh, from further afield. And hopping across the roundabouts to make your way through and head out on this final tour. With that one climb along the way, there's an intermediate sprint point along the way as well, uh, coming within sight of the finish line, coming with just uh, under eight kilometers remaining. It will be interesting to see whether that's contested by either Peter Sagan or uh, Michael Matthews. I would be ex expect certainly that uh, Sagan will be keeping a weather eye on exactly what uh, Michael Matthews is doing. But will they uh, perhaps, Brian, you know, be concentrating on the stage? 
Yeah, I think stage first and foremost. If it's easy enough, uh, then you can think about it. The person that needs the uh, points is uh, Michael Matthews. So uh, Sagan will just be looking at uh, Michael Matthews and just uh, controlling that situation because he wants that point jersey. Just looking uh, about a minute ago, uh, Marco Haller for uh, Katusha just uh, rode through the uh, finishing line. So he's been dropped out the back. So Katusha just uh, putting all their uh, efforts pretty much into keeping that uh, yellow jersey safe. Yves Lambert looking after Matteo Trentin, number 118, as the uh, camera picks him out. Just on his wheel is uh, Philippe Gilbert, the Belgian champion, already a stage winner this week. It's starting to get hectic in there as they jockey for position. Just the merest sort of hints of a stall there as uh, Reto Hollenstein just uh, looked around and the sprinter teams are trying to assemble their riders up front and it hasn't been particularly easy it's a it's a technical circuit and includes a short climb the conditions have been absolutely perfect for the riders but just uh, getting those riders organized not the work of a moment the That's thing is they can't uh, they can't uh, settle down too much i know it's all together now but uh, they can't settle it down because to settle it down the attacks will start to to happen and uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting uh, final uh, lap here because a lot of bunching up, so the pace has settled somewhat. Uh, everybody knows that uh, if the pace settles, then you're going to see some uh, counter-attacks and the uh, sprinters teams have already done a lot of effort already today controlling things, uh, but Katusha have been up for the, uh, the effort today. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting we get closer to this uh, final sprint at... Um, 7.8 to go and uh, the climb just afterwards where we've been expecting uh, some activity. So just over 10 kilometers remaining on the penultimate stage of Tour de Suisse 2017. It's the final road stage with Team BMC controlling affairs on the front. Greg Van Avermaet, keep an eye out for uh, Greg Van Avermaet, the Olympic champion. Where is he going? Will he fancy an attack or will he be uh, trying to get organized for the final sprint? Well, riders at the back of the group include uh, members of the breakaway group earlier on. They've done their work. They'll try and hang on for as long as they can. Struggling at the back, so many riders. Joe Dombrowski, what a great effort that uh, he did couple of days ago on the mountains. Dombrowski now just trying to uh, hang on like grim death with the final 10 kilometers being played out by the sprinter squads. Van der Leiken now. In the early break, will finish second in the King of the Mountains competition. Team Rompot have enjoyed their week out front. The Sprinters teams are trying to get organized. Remember, we haven't had uh, perfectly organized sprints so far this week, have we? It uh, hasn't really been the, the, the usual pattern, so it's been difficult for them to impose themselves on the, on the final stage, on this stage. I think the, the most organized sprint uh, we've seen uh, in the Tour de Suisse this year has to be the, uh, the one that Peter Sagan won, but he upset everybody by coming around the outside like a motorbike. Um, so uh, this is uh, going to be an interesting one. We've already seen a lot of the sprinters teams come, come up to the front. They're starting to suffer a little bit uh, towards the back. Some riders uh, have just uh, passed the finishing line as well, uh, being dropped. So this hasn't been uh, easy at all. And BMC are certainly uh, setting up uh, the, uh, the uh, stage for, uh, for an attack here. Dombrowski's suffering. Going to try and hang her on as best he can. The final sprint of the uh, day is coming up very passed. shortly and we just passed it indeed yeah, as just as you as you say it and it's uh, not been contested and not of any uh, real interest for all that though it is the attack now coming from Lotto Sudal Lotto Sudal put riders into the tank not uh, really perhaps thinking that they've got a rider maybe a Rollins for the sprint Tim Wellens got a fourth place finish but uh, you wouldn't think of him as a bunch uh, as a bunch sprinter so they've decided to go on the attack and that's the play from Lotto Sudal Team BMC controlling on the front of the peloton. Bora Hausgrohe next in line. The black jerseys representing the black jersey of the leader of the points competition. And that's uh, Marchinsky, Marchinsky in indeed. Thomas Marchinsky, who's gone out front, ventured fourth for Team Lotto Sedal inside seven kilometers to go. And he's uh, barely got off the front of the peloton there. The, such is the rate of progress of that large group. Yeah, it was just a soft and an up move he, he went to. You can see he's just uh, pulled over. He wanted to make it as hard as possible. They're setting up uh, Tim Wellens. Tim Wellens, you can see one, two, three, four, fifth place 
and uh, watch that uh, that rider there for the Lotto Sudal in the red because uh, Marchinski was just uh, soft enough, set it up, but uh, similar. Uh, Bora Hansko have come to the front. They want to set a very difficult tempo on here, not to uh, not to make it difficult for everybody else, but to make sure there's no attacks. Well, Peter Sagan is uh, perhaps the best among the sprinters at these short climbs at getting over them. Some of the longer climbs suit him as well. A team somewhere going. Yeah, Matthews is uh, trying to go and ambush them, and this is a bit of a surprise. Michael Matthews is going to try and stretch them thin and drag a group clear. And where is uh, Peter Sagan? As we see. Uh, BMC is that Van Avermaet on his wheel is just uh, trying to pick it up and get involved. Wellens too. This, is, we said this is a Belgian race, a Belgian circuit, and uh, Michael Matthews is it. Greg Van Avermaet is going with him. Tim Wellens, Seth Van Mark is also in the move there for uh, Cannondale. Yeah, Trentin looks like he might be trying to uh, vault across as well for Team Quickstep. Van Avermaet will push again. Feels like a World Championship. Feels a bit like an Olympics as well, doesn't it? With these circuits and these uh, short climbs across the top of the climb, the points go to Van Avermaet. They're of little consequence. Are they going to be able to stay clear? Wellens goes again. And who's uh, going to be able to cover this one? Marcus Matthews. Berger has the uh, rider for uh, Boris Hangrove, the French champion Vichot coming over here. So it's all action as we expected. Everybody knows that Sagan is the uh, the fastest, but uh, Boris Hangrove got a man in there, the German rider, and he's just going to ease it off. If they want to continue, they have to go now. They can't start easing around, looking around. There's a good group here, a good, strong, working man group, but uh, gaps have opened up just behind the set by Mark comes through. Sepp van Mark comes through for key Team Cannondale drop back and they look around themselves as if to say, uh, well, I'm not going to come through if you're not going to come through, and they cannot afford to hesitate for a moment. They've established an advantage over a bunch behind that's frantic in its efforts to get back in control of this one, and Bora are not going to be uh, minded to uh, contribute to the effort to stay out front. Wellens goes again. Wellens loves to attack. He really is pushing hard. Is it Tim Wellens or is it Van Avermaet that's gone on the attack? Well, we wait to confirm. And we'll find out very shortly because uh, heading out front and establishing a decent advantage is one of the Trek Segafredo Fabio riders. Fabio Fellini decides to go on the attack and he was uh, one of the riders that uh, we, they were looking at today because uh, they have been disappointed this week, mainly because uh, John Degenko wasn't able to, to deliver a, a sprint win. So uh, Fabio Fellini has decided to go on the attack. Well, Fellini has had a great season, hasn't he? Great 12 months as uh, Wellens goes now and has Matthews in his wheel. And who's responding behind? They're all at sixes and sevens trying to get organized. And there'll be no question of uh, organizing the sprint in the usual fashion, will there? As they come down to the final five kilometers remaining, Fellini has been closed down by Wellens. This has been relentless attacking over the uh, last uh, couple of kilometers. Now it's fast over the top of that climb. This is a perfect opportunity for a counter attack. As soon as Fellini looks around, he ease up. This is a perfect opportunity for another attack to go. Well, who's going to go next? And uh, as we see them looking around each other, it's uh, Wellens in red, has a little look around. Matthews in the white and black of Team Sunweb, well to the fore. We're picking out riders at the back of the bunch that are pretty much out of contention at this moment. Such has been the pace. Such is the way that the uh, peloton is Stretch thin, we've got lots of riders that are really suffering to hang on in this peloton. Going again, looks like uh, Bahrain Merida are putting riders uh, well to the fore. Yeah, this is uh, Garcia uh, that uh, has come to the front. So Garcia of uh, Bahrain Merida has uh, decided to have a crack here. But uh, Bora Hansgrohe shutting things down. Very difficult uh, period for uh, Bora Hansgrohe to shut everything down because uh, a lot of strong riders willing to go on the attack. Well, there was uh, there were question marks over the overall strength of the Bora Hansgrohe squad for Peter Sagan when he moved across to this team uh, for 2017. But they, those questions have certainly been answered, haven't they? They've done uh, manful work for the uh, world champion throughout the week, throughout the season, and indeed for uh, many other riders too, through Giro d'Italia. Wonderful success for Bora Hansgrohe. Another gap is closed. Another attack is shut down and repelled. Where is Peter Sagan? As we see Philip Gilbert is now starting to move up, and perhaps he fancies a late, late attack, or perhaps in, in turn he's trying to look after his sprinter, Mario Trentin, who's moving up on the outside. Well, Sagan is sitting in fourth place at the moment. Uh, he might be called in, like in the stage two, where he had to cover a couple of attacks. You can see the uh, couple of the uh, blue jerseys for a quick step more coming up towards the front. Philip Gilbert is a want to give a, a, a great opportunity for uh, Matteo Trentin. Very difficult times for uh, Bora Hansgrohe. They don't have the numbers at the front for the world champion. 3,700 metres remaining on stage eight, the final road stage of the uh, Tour de Suisse. 
My last heart-breaking moment for the riders in, uh, in road race action in Tour de Suisse 2017 as they charge out of the corner. And Team Quickstep seem to have the numbers in there at the moment. They do, a uh, very depleted peloton, so it uh, looks as if it's going to be a little bit safer uh, coming into this uh, fairly technical finish now. Riders at the back now just trying to hang on grimly through to the finish. They know it's going to be very difficult to get in contention. Mind you, it's not an absolutely enormous group out front, is it? And uh, the uh, Bora House Crew squad have Conrad, who've, uh, who's gone to the fore, the Team Quickstep squad in blue putting riders up there now we have uh, aqua blue sport going for uh, an improbable and extraordinary uh, second stage victory of the week if they could manage it they've got that uh, gold chevron on their back now we've got uh, orica scott on the left hand side starting to uh, pile it on in those blue jerseys with the green helmets up through the middle team cannondale drop back paddy bevan will try to get involved for the uh, team in the lime green jerseys and uae have uh, the great hope that is Sasha Modolo as Modolo managed to make it over the hill and get himself into contention. Down to the final 2,600 metres on stage eight of Tour de Suisse. And Team UAE having a little look around as we have a new race set and another uh, opportunity perhaps for a late, late attack. Yeah, it's tempo still high at the moment. Uh, Orica Scott coming, everybody looking around. Uh, it's a small peloton. Uh, nobody wants to get, try to, uh, to go too early. You can see Bora Hansgrohe trying to get numbers in front of uh, Sagan at the moment. All the sprinters ducking and diving. Because they're depleted in numbers, nobody wants to kind of take it on from the front. Well, we have uh, Bora Hansgrohe on the right-hand side with the black jerseys, the blue helmets, then those uh, blue jerseys with the white helmets of the Quickstep squad. They'll look after Matteo Trentin. That's the expectation. He's got the strong legs. They've got plenty of fast sprinters in amongst them. Trentin, probably the fastest of all. Team Aqua Blue Sport with the... Uh, dark blue jerseys and that uh, gold chevron flash on their jersey and they've got uh, Aaron Gate who's produced a top 10 finish for them it's the Belgian national road race champion Philippe Gilbert already a stage winner this week that goes to lead uh, the uh, lead the charge for the quick step squad moving up on the right hand side Trek Segafredo with uh, Fellini has uh, been in good form and so too we'll expect John Degenkolb is not too far from the front team Sunweb Michael Matthews having to fly solo on this one. Yeah, you can just see the uh, team of uh, Quickstep uh, starting to get numbers towards the front. They've got uh, the uh, Belgian champion, uh, Gilbert, and they get uh, three riders just behind. So they do have the numbers. If anybody has the numbers in this uh, front group, it certainly is the uh, boys in blue from uh, Quickstep. Tim Astana have one rider well to the fore at the moment. He's trying to solo to victory. Could it be Oscar Gatto? He's been uh, to the fore in the sprints so far this week. Francaise de Jeu trying to propel Vichot, who has a uh, top six finishing position in the sprints in 2016. Under the kite, 1,000 metres remaining. Tour de Suisse, road racing is coming to a conclusion. We've got the time trial tomorrow, but this one is being left down to a truncated group that will uh, decide the honours of stage eight. And we're down to the final sprint as so many of the teams are struggling to get back into contention. Gilbert sets a relentless pace on the front. Quick step on it at the moment. And as they go down into this left-hander, it's looking good at the moment for Mario Trentin. Where is uh, Michael Matthews, already a stage winner this week? Where is uh, Peter Sagan, a 14-time stage winner and a winner of stage five? Sagan sits in fifth position at the moment and looking strong. Yeah, you can see uh, Quickstep uh, riding very quickly at the moment. It, it's a bit of a tailwind uh, sprint, but it uh, looks as if uh, Sasha Modelo is there for a uh, UE. So going to the line, it is Mario Trentin that's going to launch, and he's got uh, Peter Sagan coming on his left-hand side. Sasha Modelo on his right-hand side. Is it going to work out for Team Quickstep? Is it going to work out for Peter Sagan? There's no one going to stop Peter Sagan from taking a 15-stage victory. He's got bike links in hand. It's all too easy for Peter Sagan. He's got another celebration to uh, practice, and uh, Sasha Modelo... He's the first to congratulate him. He'll have to make two with second. But it's Peter Sagan, perfectly poised and placed. And there is just no one even remotely as fast as Peter Sagan in these finishes in Tour de Suisse 2017. Well, Sagan takes his second stage victory of the week. It's the 15th of his career. Absolutely perfectly played. Quick step owned it, but just didn't have the speed at the finish. 
No, as you can see here, it was uh, slightly downhill, fast sprinting like the, the other stage he won. He's uh, unbeaten from uh, this uh, distance. He, he was in the perfect place. Matthew Matthews, Bonifacio, Modelo, Trentin, they all found uh, wanting. Good to see Magnus Cork Nielsen up towards the uh, front uh, this time. He's had a very difficult uh, Tour de Suisse, but uh, Degenkolb again comes away uh, empty handed. Well, he throws the bike out the line. It was hardly necessary. It was part of his celebration, really, wasn't it? Peter Sagan takes a 15th stage victory in Tour de Suisse, his second of the week. He adores this bike race. He's been winning for fun since 2011, and he takes the victory to replicate this success for himself into Schaffhausen back in 2011. And uh, Peter Sagan accepts the congratulations and indeed uh, will warmly thank his teammates for their efforts throughout the day. And he's hauled off to another victory presentation. Sagan takes the stage victory. Spilak will stay in the yellow jersey, we understand. And uh, that is the general classification situation. That's the stage situation. Stage eight is complete, and it's been a good one for Bora Highscrow. So Team Quickstep seemed to own it all the way to the line. Had control, but Matteo Trentin, well, he's a fast sprinter, but nicely timed by uh, Sasha Modolo. But I think, did he have to check his effort now? It's just uh, Peter Sagan, just so much faster. And John Degenkolb all over the bike, trying to uh, maintain the pace through to the line. Fazio, Magnus Court Nielsen, all those riders well to the fore, but. No one to touch Peter Sagan on stage eight. So there you have confirmation of stage honors. Peter Sagan ahead of Sasha Modolo, Matteo Trentin. Magnus Court Nielsen getting up for a fourth. Bonifacio, another top five for him. Michael Matthews, a disappointed sixth, ahead of a John Degenkolb, Oscar Gatto. Kevin Reza getting up into the uh, top ten, ahead of Salvatore Puccio. And uh, Peter Sagan prepares for another victory celebration. We understand that the final lap was neutralized for general classification, so uh, no question that there were any uh, implications for any riders that were dropped or uh, caught behind in that final lap. So it was very much left up to the decision for stage honors. There's confirmation of the uh, general classification situation with Spilak hanging on to that 52 second advantage over uh, Damiano Caruso, Stefan Kreuzvik in third, Pozzavivo, Roy Costa, Matthias Frank, and the rest, no change on the overall top 10 following stage eight.